two. Do you hear what she's doing? If you get up close, you can see her. Basically, this is what we call a reverse sneeze. And it is not at all uncommon. And the fact of the matter is, it's a spasm. And it's a lot like you or I getting a sneeze, but it's actually what we call a reverse sneeze. So instead of like that, they're going... And though it's a little uncomfortable, it really does not harm them anyway. And there's a couple of things that can cause this. It can be a result of this tiny little bug crawling around in their nasal cavity. Ew, right? Disgusting. Um, or it can be a result of allergies causing a little irritation to the, the back, the nasal cavities, maybe some post-nasal drip. And then the end result is that lovely, lovely sound that they create. Dog lovers believe and love to say that dogs grieve, dogs cry, uh, and they will share articles and videos with you of dogs crying as proof dogs love us, uh, proof they are unconditionally loving, loyal, uh, and so on. Uh, and, uh, you know, they really believe that dogs cry and experience emotions like humans do. Well, I needed to make this video to let you all know that this is false. And I'm going to show you how it's false. Uh, there are many articles online. You can just search Do Dogs Cry and you will find article after article explaining that they do not actually shed tears of emotion. Human beings are actually the only animal that sheds tears in response to emotion. Uh, they still don't even know for sure why we do this. There are different theories. Uh, some believe it's an evolutionary uh, thing that helped us survive because it was a signal to enemies that we could not see properly and that we were not a threat or something weird. I don't know. Uh, some people think it's because um, we are shedding toxins and uh, toxins that are released when we're stressed, and so that's why we feel better after we have a good cry. It's because we release these toxins. Um, anyway, it's not understood, but it is known that, that humans are the only animals that cry because of emotion. Dogs do shed tears, but when they do so, it's always because of either an irritant in the eye, it could be you know, a foreign object or a scratch on the cornea or something. It could also be an eye infection. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to link you to a couple of articles that will explain the precise reasons why dogs shed tears. They are never due to emotions. It's also known that dogs do feel emotion. That no one's disputing that, but they do feel less emotion and le less complicated emotions, I should say. Uh, science shows it's understood that dogs are capable of very basic emotions such as joy, um, fear, anger, uh, but more complicated emotions such as pride, shame, and guilt, they are unable to experience simply because their brains are different from ours, they are way smaller, and they are a different species. Now this is the thing. Human beings uh, like to attribute human qualities to dogs. They love, they, it's almost as if they are desperate to see human qualities in dogs. Uh, this is called anthropomorphizing dogs. I made a video about this. Uh, we, as a species, for some reason, um, anthropomorphize dogs. Well, there are certain theories as to why we do this, um, going back to uh, Christianity and uh, how uh, Christians, since 
well, for hundreds of years, have been using animals to tell moral stories. Anyway, I talk about that in my video about anthropomorphizing animals. Uh, the point is, is that we don't see dogs for what they are. We look at them and we think they are smiling, you know, because the corners of their mouths turn upward. Uh, but they don't smile. This is not a smile. I made another video about that. Uh, you know, they're just regulating their body temperature and they will have that exact same face on when they are, uh, you know, killing a baby or a person uh, or have just you know, eaten their owner's face. You know, dogs are animals. They are very simple, instinct-driven animals that are not capable of having the experiences humans have or the emotions humans have, but we are desperate to look at dogs as companions. You know, their behaviors, their food-seeking behaviors, uh, such as licking, uh, we interpret that as affection and love because we are so starved for affection, I guess, or because we want to be able to have a quote relationship with someone who never questions us or talks back to us because that's just too difficult for a lot of people to handle. Uh, they just want uh, someone who will just do whatever they say. Someone they can control completely because we control every single aspect of a dog's existence. <laughs> We, tr we make up stories in our minds of, of what they are and what, you know, what they are capable of feeling without acknowledging the truth about them. And that's what this video is about. The truth is that dogs do respond to loss. Uh, I'm going to share an article with you. There are many such articles on the internet you can read if you search for them. This article here that I'm going to share with you talks about uh, photographs of... Uh, for example, a photograph of a police dog laying its paw on the casket of its slain master. Um, people love to share these kinds of pictures uh, that show dogs that appear to be grieving by the graves or caskets of their deceased owners. Uh, and people will share anecdotal evidence. There's a lot of that. Um, they strongly believe that dogs are capable of uh, grief, that these dogs are in mourning and so on. Uh, but uh, skeptics believe, and I agree, that you can explain these stories without attributing human-like emotions to canines. The article explains how photographs of dogs at their master's funerals that appear to be grieving uh, are weak evidence of grief in dogs. It says that dogs are very responsive to subtle human cues. Uh, so when a human points, gazes, or nods in the direction of a box, uh, dogs will become curious about it. So that it says that it's entirely possible that curiosity rather than grief is motivating these dogs to inspect the coffins that are getting so much attention from the people around the dog. Um, and it says that dogs that sit at master's grave sites may simply be waiting for the master to return rather than mourning his death. The article ends with, uh, with something I've talked about already in this video, how dogs often feed off the remains of their deceased owners. Uh, this is common, even if there's a lot of dog food available to the dog, it's still going to eat the owner, most likely starting with the face. Uh, I will put links in the description if you don't believe me. This is established. This is true. Uh, and they do this because they are not human. This is what we really need to drill into people's heads. This is what is not getting through to people. That dogs are not human. They are bloodthirsty predators. Here's another article I'll share with you about how dogs do appear to grieve when... Uh, other companion animals in the house die. Um, this applies to when human uh, companions die. Dogs are very social animals. Uh, and so when a member of its pack or family dies, uh, 
they are very aware of the loss and they may uh, be very reactive to stimuli, appear clingy, anxious, uh, depressed. They may demonstrate a loss of interest in playing, sleeping, or eating. It says here that these behavioral and emotional changes may be a temporary response to the loss, a distress response to the owner's sadness, a distress response to changes in routine that occur as the result of the death or an underlying medical condition. So you're in a house with a bunch of humans that are all sad and as an animal that's very responsive to the emotions of other people. You know, even dog owners <laughs> freely admit this. Uh, dogs will pick up on your sadness, uh, on the sadness of those around them. Now, I found this interview with a dog behavior scientist at Arizona State University who talks about whether dogs grieve the loss of their owners. It shows a photograph of Sully, which was George H.W. Bush's service dog, lying in front of the former president's casket. This photo went viral. It convinced a lot of people that dogs feel grief and mourn the way we do. Uh, but this dog behavior scientist explains that he does not believe the dog is even aware that its master's body is lying in that casket. Uh, he talks about how we anthropomorphize dogs and how uh, dogs do not experience grief the same way we do. Uh, he compares dogs to foster children. Uh, a dog, for example, will adapt to a new family very quickly. Within a couple of weeks, it will adapt. Uh, but foster children become very traumatized and upset and, you know, suffer all sorts of behavioral problems, uh, emotional problems, I should say, uh, if they are, you know, plucked out of their families and put into a new family. Dogs are not the same. Dogs are not human. So that's something very interesting uh, to listen to that supports what I'm saying. And so you can see that all of these responses can just be a response to uh, you know, a change in routine. It doesn't have to be grief. I don't think it is grief. I don't believe for a second that dogs have the ability to grieve the way humans do. Why do I say this? Because of this article. You know, th this dog was this guy's best friend for like 10 years. And then all of a sudden the guy had a seizure, falls out of bed, the dog goes after his jugular and kills him. You don't do that to someone that you love. Um, you know, people are so, I don't understand how people are able to, you know, lie to themselves, not see reality. Uh, they are either so stupid or gullible or just, uh, I don't know, brain dead. Honestly, my theory about mind controlling parasites infecting the brains of these people, uh, I don't think it's far fetched. Because honestly, it doesn't make any sense how people cannot see that the behavior dogs routinely display is not loving at all. Killing babies in their bassinets, chasing children that are walking to school or waiting for the bus, killing them. Uh, it, I mean, I've made so many videos about this and it just baffles me that people continue to insist that dogs are human-like and that they are loving creatures. They are not by a long shot. They are remorseless. They have no guilt, no shame. They are purely instinct driven and their behaviors are absolutely repugnant and disgusting. Now, I'm gonna end this video here. Uh, I just wanna say that my mind seems to be turning away from making videos. I feel like, I want to be focusing on other things. I have other projects I want to work on and I'm just, I'm not feeling the passion that I used to feel uh, when it comes to making videos. I'm sure I'm not done with this channel. I'll probably come back, uh, but I'm gonna be taking a break for a while. Uh, I have a friend of mine I was talking to and I was saying, you know, I, I just hope that the videos I've made will plant seeds in people's minds that will sprout at some point. I understand that uh, a lot of people are not ready to hear what I have to say. I know that I am ahead of my time. It's just like with veganism, like t for example, it's the same thing. Arguing with dog lovers is the exact same thing as arguing with non-vegans. I've been through this uh, before, like about 10 years ago. 
Gandhi said, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. So 10 years ago, people laughed at me, fought with me, called me crazy, but now I'm winning. <laughs> and I'll share this very uh, awesome article. Uh, and I knew this day was going to come. I know that plant-based eating is the way of the future and it's it's happening it's unfolding fast food chains are offering plant-based burgers it's like becoming so mainstream now and the same thing happened with smoking when people started to speak out against smoking they ignored people then they laughed then they fought but then you know the non-smoking people won and we passed new laws and things changed change happens slowly and this is the same thing you see with women's rights slavery the same thing is going to happen with dog ownership. We are just in the very, very early stages of this social movement, uh, but it's happening and more and more people are going to speak out. So I was talking about this with my friend and he said to me that not only have I planted seeds, I have planted an orchard and uh, his words are so good to hear. And I, I'm just going to step back and I'm going to tend to the garden and weed it periodically. I'm going to maintain this YouTube channel. Uh, and um, keep it a safe place where like-minded people can come together and express themselves in a safe environment without the onslaught of attacks from dog lovers because we deal with that every day. We have enough of it. You know, people accuse me of not being able to handle their comments. No, I can't handle that here because we handle that enough out there in society. This is a place for like-minded people to come and uh or you know genuinely curious people can come and ask questions if you are respectful uh you can by all means you know interact with us but if you're going to come on here and argue with us you're not welcome we deal with this enough uh we are a very small minority and we need a place to come together and feel safe to express ourselves uh so i'm going to maintain that for you guys uh there is always reddit dog free i highly recommend you Check it out. Go there. There are so many people. I believe they have like over 15,000 members now and it's growing like crazy exponentially. People are coming out of the woodwork. I predicted this. It's happening. More and more people are going to speak out and they're going to feel safe to come out uh, because there are so many people out there who feel the way we do. They just don't say anything. Why? Because the internet is full of memes that say, if you don't like dogs, I don't like you. Uh, if you don't like dogs, you have no soul. People know that if they speak out and are honest about their feelings uh, towards dogs, they're going to be attacked. Nobody wants to deal with that. So that's why we don't confront people in stores. We don't speak up to our neighbors and the way that their dogs are torturing us. People are just quiet and they're suffering in silence because they are afraid of the backlash. And there is a lot of backlash at this point. It's, it's like when I first ado adopted a plant-based diet, like 12 years ago or whatever, uh, people mocked me. If you were a vegan like 12 years ago, you were ridiculed big time. Now it's mainstream. It's nothing. Uh, and it's actually, you know, people are waking up and realizing it's the way to go, you know. So not only for ethical reasons, but for health reasons and for environmental reasons, it's actually the only way uh, our species is going to survive uh, because our, our our current diet is not sustainable. Anyhow, um, what, else, what else do I want to say? So yeah, I'm going to be busy with some other projects, uh, but I'll check in from time to time and probably, uh, I'll probably be, I'll, I'll be back. I mean, I just need a break. I need to focus on some other stuff right now. So I got a lot of exciting art projects on the go. And uh, so... I thank you all so much for all of your support and for your comments uh, and for just being there. And uh, I'm, I'm really hoping that you are all going to share my videos and uh, speak out and possibly think of making your own channels, uh, YouTube channels, whatever. Just, um, just get the message out there. And the more people share their feelings about dogs, uh, the more normal it's going to be and the easier it's going to be for people to come out and speak up and eventually a tipping point will be reached and when that tipping point is reached just as it was with smoking and slavery and 
the women's right to vote, there will be change in our society. And, and dogs will be banned. It's only a matter of time. It's going to start with pit bulls, pit bull type dogs, fighting breeds. But eventually, it's going to spread to all breeds. And it's going to go the way of the dinosaurs, people. I'm telling you, mark my words. I am not from this time. I'm ahead of my time. I know this. And uh, it's going to happen. And one day, people are going to look back on me and us. I, not just me. There's I hate dogs. There's all the people at the National Pitbull Victim Awareness uh, dogsbite.org, many other places, many, many Facebook groups and pages. Uh, people are pioneers. Uh, we are the pioneers. It is hard to be a pioneer, but uh, let's persevere uh, because this world needs us. Uh, we are the ones that bring change, positive change. Uh, it's not an easy job, but someone's got to do it. The future is dog-free, guys, and take care, and I'll see you later.